W-I-C-R. Welcome back, folks, to our third and final segment of The Rock is On. Now, we are making the transition from basketball to baseball. And since uh, I'm going to give you my baseball predictions because uh, la- because um, we, were, we weren't able to do it because there was no class last week. So here we go. I'm going to start off with the AL East. And the, the team I'm picking to win the AL East is the Toronto Blue Jays. And here's why I'm picking the Blue Jays to win the East. They have a potent lineup. You know, they have one of the best lineups in all of baseball. With and the, it's every line, every everywhere you look, it seems like everyone can, any guy can hit, you know, ten or twenty plus home runs a year. So you have, you know, they have Troy Tulowitzki, Edwin Encarnacion, Jose Bautista, and uh, the reigning M- AL MVP in Josh Donaldson, who was a steal for the Blue Jays, not this off season, but the off season before. And they acquired via trade with the with the Oakland A's and Billy Bean. Now. I know what some people may say is like, oh, they can't, the Blue Jays, they don't have strong enough starting pitching. You know, you need pitching to win, which, you know what? I, I firmly believe that, that you do need pitching to win the in baseball. Like, you know, in football, you need defense to win, you need defense to win games. But I think if you look at the rest of the teams in the AL East, I don't think there, there's not one pitching staff, not even the Red Sox, who I think have the best pitching staff in the, Amer- in the American League East can stop this uh, Blue Jay lineup. The, you know, the Yankees, they have a strong pitching staff too, but the question is, can they stay healthy? You know, can their lineup consistently hit? Can guys like Beltron, Teixeira, A-Rod, can A-Rod have, can they stay healthy? Can A-Rod, you know, have the same success that he had throughout most of the last year? But at, when it was all said and done, I think that uh, the Blue Jays, they're just too much to handle for any of the teams in the AL East to hand, to, that they can handle or can just stop. So, you know, I'm going to pick the Toronto Blue Jays. And I think their lineup could uh, carry their team and can make up for the lack of pitching that they have. Moving on to the AL Central, I am picking the defending World Series champion, Kansas City Royals. Now, I'm picking the Royals because... You look at the transactions that they made or during the offseason, they're bringing back most of their starting players. You know, you're still going to have those core group of guys, and Mike Moustakis, Eric Hosmer, Hosmer uh, Lorenzo Cain, Alcides Escobar, you know, Kenji Morales, Salvador, and uh, the World Series MVP, and Salvador Perez. And you know what? They have. And I'm picking the Royals because they have players that win, that knows what it takes to win, and they and I just I just admire and I respect their approach of how they win ball games, and that's you know playing small ball, you know working the count, being aggressive when you have to, stealing bases, you know because the Royals, let's be honest, they don't fascinate, they don't go wow, you know they're not they don't wow people or they wow you, you know they're not like the Blue Jays where it's like they they hit a home run and they strike out. You know, they, they, the Royals play disciplined baseball. They put the ball in play. They work the count. And it's and it's in their favor. And also, you, you can't deny that they have a strong bullpen. You know, and Wade Davis, Kelvin Herrera, and uh, Danny Duffy. Because, you know, we saw in the last few years, you know, this Royals team, if they get a lead, you know, late in the game, 6th, 7th inning, yeah, you're, you're not going to, ta- you're not even going uh, to see the ball. Or hit the ball with that bullpen. You're not. Because they have, I think, other than the Yankees, they have the best bullpen in the league. Now, moving on. And, you know, and also another thing, referring back to the Royals before we move on to the AL West. They don't have a strong rotation. You know, everyone says, oh, their rotation is not strong enough. That was the case last year. You know, they made, they got, they acquired Johnny, Johnny Cueto from the Cincinnati Reds via trade. You know, kind of like to put him over that hump a little or to have that that uh, workhorse, excuse me, for the postseason. But Cueto didn't do necessarily well in the uh, playoffs, though. He, did, he pitched well against the Mets, though, in Game 2. I'll give him credit for that. But, you know, the Royals, they prove, that, that's like the only time you, you prove that, you know, you don't need starting pitching to win. You just need the right demeanor and the right approach. 
So that's another favor. In, that's another point in favor for the Royals. Now we're moving on to the AL West, and I am picking the Houston Astros. And you know the Astros made a significant jump last year. You know they there was a point in time where they had three consecutive 100 plus loss seasons, and uh, in 2014 they made the jump from you know low 50s, low mid 50 wins or in the win total from low 50s, low to mid 50s to uh, 70 wins. And I said at the time, I said, you know what? If that team could win 70 games, that'd be an accomplishment. And sure enough, they did. Last year, they pretty much put it all together. They called up uh, the young prospect and young phenom and Carlos Carrera playing shortstop, you know. And they have a good team all around. They have great, solid young players, you know. They have Jose Altuve, you know, who, who just shows, you know, it's not all about size. You know, it's all about hard and, you know, how much hard work you're going to put into it. So you have him, you have, you know, slugger George Springer, who, uh, you know, when his, when he makes solid contact, the ball can go, can go deep. And he's one of the great, best hitters with health, if healthy, if he can stay healthy in the game. And, you know, and then they have, and I think they have, though, some people may doubt the Astros because of their starting pitching. And I can say the range. And everyone's saying, "Oh, the Texas Rangers. You know, they have the best starting pitching in that division. You know, with Cole Hamels, Matt Harrison. You know, and the returning of Hugh Darvish. But you know what? Houston does have some great pitching, other than Dallas Keuchel, who won uh, the Cy Young last year. You know, they got Colin McHugh, who's pretty solid, and they acquired uh, Doug Fister via free agency. So that will help them. So I'm picking the Houston Astros to win the AL West. Still feels weird saying that. Houston Astros, American League. Now, for the wild card teams, now you you guys are gonna think, oh, oh, I don't know sports, or you know, what are you what are you thinking, you know? But you know what? I'm gonna go with my first team. I'm gonna go with. I gave it a lot of thought, and I'm gonna and I I made my decision. My first team I'm gonna go with is the Seattle Mariners. Yes, that's right. The Seattle Mariners are gonna make the postseason for the first time. Since 2001, when they won 116 games, you know, led by the young sensation Ichiro, uh, Brett Boone, Mike Cameron, Carlos uh, Guillen, you know, and Edgar Martinez, who was still, who was old, but, you know, he still could play at that time. And I'm picking the, the Mariners to, play, to win the wild card. Here's why, because I think they improved their defense. Their, their flaw last year was they didn't have enough guys or enough depth in the outfield. And I think they didn't have enough guys that can play well defensively in the outfield. And I think they proved in that area. You know, they acquired Leonis Martin from the Texas Rangers. And they acquire Nori Aoki and, uh, from the Giants because he was on a one-year deal. So and those both those guys can cover a lot of ground and are just great defenders. So I think that will help, help them in the long run. And uh, they just have a great middle of the order of the lineup. You know... They have one of the best three hitters. They have three phenomenal hitters in that lineup. You know, you go back with Nelson Cruz, Robinson Cano, who, you know, he started off slow last year, but I think he's going to have a great year this year. And he's going to have a back bounce back year. And then uh, one of the best third basemen, and I think he's a kept secret, you know, in uh, Kyle Seeger. And not a lot of people know him, but I think he's a phenomenal player. So I think they, they, they're they going to go. I think uh, they have that going for them. But the question is, can their lineup stay consistently hit? Because we've seen in years past with the Mariners, even when they were losing, they lost a lot of close games. You know, if King Felix was throwing up pitching or was pitching a gem, he didn't get the run support. You know, kind of, kind of reminis uh, reminiscent to uh, Johan Santana when he during his tenure with the Mets. But that's going to be a question. Can the Seattle Mariner team hit consistently? And you know what? They just have a great rotation, starting off with, you know, one of the top five pitchers in the game, in my opinion, and one of my favorite pitchers to watch in uh, King Felix uh, Hernandez. You know, and they have a solid pitcher in Asashi Iwakuma, who can give you innings year-round, and uh, they have a young star in Taiwan Rock Walker. So, you know, they got the bullpen, uh, excuse me, they got all uh, the pitching rotation going for them. Now, for my second AL wildcard team, I'm going to pick the Cleveland Indians as my second wild card team. And here's why. Because I think, other than the exception of the Mets, they have the best starting pitching in baseball. Second to the Mets. Best in the American League, I say. 
Because, you know, you look, you got Corey Kluber, who, you know, who, was a, who won the Cy Young two years ago, a few years ago. You know, Carlos Carrasco, who's just unbelievable. And Danny Salazar. You know, they these guys they're they're reminiscent to the Mets. They can they have a high velo they th- they have high velocity. They can reach ninety five to one hundred. You know, and they have some good co- they have some good players in their lineup though. Not a lot of people talk about the Indians, but believe it or not, they do have a lot of players that are good hitters. You know, starting with Michael Brantley, who is you know was drafted by the Indians. You know, worked their way worked his way through the, their minor league system. You know, and eventually. Made the big league clubs. You know, a switch hitting Carlos Santana, who's primarily the DH, but he can play catcher, he can play first, along with uh, second baseman all-star Jason Kipnis, who, you know, battled some injuries here and there, but when healthy, he's a f- sensational player. And, uh, and then they acquired Mike Napoli, who, you know, he's not the best, but, you know, he's a solid uh, right-handed bat and can play first base for them. So you got to give them that. Now... Moving on to the National League. Now, I don't want to sound biased, but uh, I'm going to go with uh, New York Mets winning the NL East. Because you know what? Hands down, they have the best starting pitching best starting pitching in all of baseball. You know, with Matt Harvey, Noah Syndergaard, Jacob deGrom, Steven Matz, you know, Zach Wheeler, who's going to come back. And, you know, and, and granted... He does this guy doesn't get a lot of credit or get, doesn't get talked about a lot, but Bartolo Colon, he doesn't have a high velocity fastball or he's not the same pitcher that he once was, but he can but what do you call it? He could give you innings though, and his arm is like a rubbing rubber band. He and he also he just throws strikes. He'll never miss that. He'll never uh that's that's not a flaw that you have to worry about. Or that's not something you don't have to worry about with Bartolo. You know, and they have and you know, going to their lineup, you know, they have Conforto. For a full year, because he came up late in, I believe it was late June, when, you know, they couldn't hit the side of a barn, and they just struggled mightily offensively, you know, and uh, they improved their defense up the middle, which was a flaw for them, you know, they made the, they made the accusations, accusations for Estrubel Cabrera and uh, Wilmer, uh, Wilmer Flores, uh, Neil Walker, you know, and that's such a huge upgrade from Daniel Murphy and uh, Ruben Tejada. You know, because granted, Murphy could hit, but he was just a sloppy defender, and uh, I think the Mets improved in that aspect. But most of all, the big, uh, the big uh, chip that they got was, uh, or what was huge for them was bringing back Yolanda Cespedes, because we saw what he did at the end of last year, or when the Mets acquired him at the trade deadline from the Detroit Tigers, how how such a how such, how a major contributor he is to the team, and how he just changes that whole lineup, you know. They pitchers can walk Cespedes to face Duda, and Duda comes through, or Wright, or even Granderson, or anybody, anyone batting in the middle of that order. Cespedes makes a big deal for the Mets, and I think he was the key reason why they went to uh, the they made the postseason. They went to the World Series. Now for the NL Central, I'm picking the Chicago Cubs. You know what? I just I like I love the Cubs uh, accusations that they made. Because they improved their team so much, you know they they acquired one of the biggest free agents or second best outfielder in my opinion, via free agency and uh, Jason Hayward gave him a lucrative contract, eight year, hundred fifty six hundred fifty six million dollar deal, and not to mention they stole him from a division rival in the Cardinals, so you know you take a bat from them, and you know they got Ben Zobris who has connections with uh, Joe Madden during their tenure with the Rays. You know, and he was a winning player. He was on the Royal. He was the Royals' starting second baseman. Uh, oh, not he. Oh, he re- he was required from the Royals from the A's last year and became the second baseman during their World Series run last year. And they uh required John Lackey, who shows that veteran leadership. And believe it or not, here's a fun fact for you folks: John Lackey is the f- only pitcher in Major League Baseball history to start and win two clinching World Series games for two different teams. He did it for the Angels against the Giants in 2002, and he did it for the Red Sox against the Cardinals in 2013. That's just something to keep in mind. And you know what? They're bringing they, the Cubs have a their core group of guys as well. You know, and Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and Kyle Schwarber. Now, granted, I understand Schwarber is very sloppy with the glove defensively, but the guy, if he gets a hold of one, he's like a so, he, he can drive it a mile. You know, he's like a softball player <laughs> that just. You know, uppercut this, have an uppercut swing and just drive the ball. Maybe they put him at catcher. 
in terms of defensive purposes, but we'll sh we shall see this season. Now, the NL West, I'm going to pick the San Francisco Giants. And here's why, because you know what? They're one of the teams that have great starting pitching in all of baseball. They have, you know, starting off with, you know, the one of the uh, former World Series MVP, and Madison Bob Gardner, uh, Johnny Cueto, who they acquired from the uh, who pitched for the Royals last year, and he, they required him free agency. Jeff Samarja, another pitcher they acquired in free agency, along with Matt Kane. You know, and these guys, they're winners. <clears throat> Excuse me, these guys, and you know, they have a great manager in Bruce Bochy, and they have players that have been on the World Series runs before with Buster Posey, Hunter Pence. Uh, Danny Duffy, Joe Panic, and Brandon Crawford. So you know what? And plus, it's an even year for the Giants. So they have this thing where they win the World Series every other year. So maybe this is the year. Maybe it's not. I don't say. I don't think it is. <laughs> and now for the NL Wild Card teams, I'm picking the St. Louis Cardinals as my first Wild Card team because there's another team that has pitching. You know, starting with Michael Waka, uh, Adam Wainwright. And Carlos Martinez, you know, guys that have great velocity, velocity, you know, and have that blow up by you fastball, you know, and they mix their pitches around. And you know what? You you can't doubt the Cardinals because the Cardinals are kind of like, how can I say it? They're kind of like the Patriots of baseball. You know, they make, they're going to be, they're going to be in it every year. They're going to make the playoffs. They're going to be entitled to win a World Series every year. You know, kind of similar to how the Yankees were back in the 90s, you know, but man, man, have times changed <laughs> since then? But you know what, the Cardinals—you couldn't, you can't doubt the Cardinals, though. So you know, I'm picking them as their first wild card team. And not to mention, you know, and they also the Cardinals are known to have that. They have they're known to having that next man up, uh, next man step up mentality or next man up mentality, because we've seen you know their key guys like Matt Adams, Yadier Molina, and um. Johnny Peralta, you know, these guys are getting hurt, but you know what? They, they they have a system, they have a philosophy, the Cardinals, where it started in their single A team, and they work, and they uh, spread it to their double A and their triple A team, and by the time these players that go through their minor league organization, they reach the big league club, they know what to do, and it's pretty much all program, and you can't doubt the Cardinals for that. And lastly, you know what? I gave this some thought. About my second NL wild card team, you know, and when I once I th I thought about it, I, it just seemed right. I just think this is gonna be a shocker to some people, but for my second wild card team, I'm picking the Mets division rivals to be in the second wild card team to be the second wild card, and that's the Washington Nationals. And here's why: I think last year, you know, they had lofty expectations because uh, they uh, you know, they had this superstar team. They had dominant pitching, dominant hitting, you know. But it, it, they just weren't able to put the pieces together. You know, and Matt Williams, you know, just seemed, made the club, ha had that uneasiness in the clubhouse, though. Players weren't relaxed. They weren't loose. And I think, you know, getting Dusty Baker, a guy, now, granted, he hasn't won anything, but he has postseason experience. You know, he led the Giants to the 2002 World Series, but unfortunately came up one game short, had a 3-2 lead. Lost game six and seven, blew game six, I should say, you know, and then could have took the Cubs to the World Series, but uh, we all know what happened with Steve Bartman in that fatal eighth inning, <laughs> fatal eighth inning, poor Steve. But you know what? He has that experience, though. He knows what it takes to win, and plus, you know, they have good pitching too, with Strasburg and uh, Scherzer leading the way at the top of the rotation, and plus, you know, they have one of the greatest hitters or one of the best hitters in the game, in Bryce Harper. So you can't, and along with Jason Worth and whatnot, and you can't do that, and you can't doubt him for that. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, our World Series prediction. Now, the world, now, I, some people may think this is another biased thing, but you know what? I firmly believe that this team is going to win the World Series and that team is going to be the New York Mets over the <clears throat> excuse me it's going to be the New York Mets over the Toronto Blue Jays for the 2016 World Series and here's why i think you know both these teams last year went deep in the playoffs you know Blue Jays came up short they played a tight they played a tight close series with the uh, the Royals but came empty-handed 
And uh, the Mets, you know, we made we saw what they did last year, make it to the World Series. But you know what? That World Series, other than the exception of Game 2 and Game 3, was a lot closer than what people thought it was. Because, you know, it all came down to a play. Now, granted, the World Series, that World Series between the Mets and the Royals ended in five games. But that, but it all came down to one play. You know, if it was a play here, a play there, a play that was made, a play that wasn't made. You know, and the Mets, honestly, honestly they could have won that World Series if they just made the plays. But you know what? I think this team's going to re- has a goal in mind. They have, they can, they're going to live up to the expectations and they're going to dominate. And I think they have, I think they're the best team in the national league and one of the best teams in all of baseball. Just their only Achilles heel is the bullpen because the Mets are going to be in a lot of close games. All right. It's all a matter of, can the bullpen bring them home? Can the bullpen shut the door and not give the opposition a chance to get back in the game or even win the game? Because if the Mets bullpen can get their act together and put it or put it all together, the Mets could win, possibly win a hundred plus games. Plus, I always say, strong pitching or great pitching can beat good hitting anytime, anywhere. And the Mets have at least five young guys or five great pitching, great, uh, five great pitchers that can get the job done. And that concludes our our third and final segment of the Rock is on. Tune in next week and see uh and we'll talk about some baseball and some NBA basketball. Have a great day, folks.